In this third chapter, we will have a look at some existing strategies on location enablement of government, location enablement of, of society, but also at a set of future challenges that still exist uh, when we want to uh, work on our location enablement. Uh, so this chapter on strategies and future challenges is all about how can we support, but also steer location enablement. Now, summarizing this, we see that there are in fact two main types of challenges. On one hand, there are challenges with regard to the demand side. It's about how can we make sure that the, how can we make sure that location information is and can be effectively and innovatively used in public policies and digital public services. That's the demand side that should be uh, addressed. But there's also the supply side because even though a large uh, there's all the uh, existing infrastructures, existing data spaces already are uh, making available a lot of data. It's about how can we make sure that they really provide data in such a way that they uh, support uh, the provision support uh, policies and services. Now the strategies on location enablement. It's all about how, to, how it's all about addressing these two uh, challenges in such a way in an integrated way. So we focus in this chapter is on the existing strategies or existing strategic approaches and initiatives on managing and maximizing the value of location of information through location enablement. In this chapter, we will look at examples of existing strategies at four levels. We start with the international level. We also look at the European level, national level, and then finally subnational level to show uh, how strategies for realizing location enablement exist and are being implemented at each of these levels. Let us start with the international level by having a look at what the United Nations are, curr the United Nations are currently doing with regard to location enablement. Talking about the United Nations, we see in fact two main strategic documents. On one hand, there's a geospatial strategy for the United Nations, which looks at, which look at the work or the operations of the United Nations and organization itself, and tries to provide a strategy on how to better uh, take advantage of location information uh, by the United Nations. Interesting element of their strategy is the idea of delivering as one, where, where geospatial data could support the, the work of different departments, different people within the United Nations. I think this uh, idea of working together and de delivering services one is an important element of location ele enablement. Another element of the United Nations strategic approach to location data and technologies uh, is the integrated geospatial information framework. This framework was developed by the United Nations Statistics Division uh, in collaboration with the World Bank. And the aim was to support countries in establishing or, or strengthening their national uh, geospatial information management arrangements and the infrastructures or their spatial data infrastructures. Now, the um, the integrated geospatial inf information framework in fact comp comprises three different documents. There's an overarching strategy framework, there's an implementation guide, and then the third level are a series of country level actions. Uh, the framework makes concrete recommendations on how to establish a national geospatial information management, but also how uh, national governments and other governments could make use of location uh, data uh, to support its services, to support its decision making. Also an important element of the framework is that it really calls for partnerships, calls for collaborations across government, but also with civil society, with businesses and with academic institutions. Now the figure clearly shows the nine strategic, so-called strategic pathways that are included in the, in the framework. It shows the importance of elements related to the governments, technology, but also the people side. If you look at the European level, we see an interesting uh, strategic framework or overarching framework in the European uh, Union location framework, Blueprint, which is a guidance framework for the use of location information in policy and digital public services. Uh, the Blueprint is fully in line with the uh, European interoperability framework because it considers uh, various aspects of location interoperability in particular. Uh, originally, the, blue was, the blueprint was developed in the context of the EULF project under the ISA program. Afterwards, it was uh, updated regularly to reflect uh, updates or to reflect uh, latest developments, latest trends on the technology side, but also on the policy side. This update took place under the ELISA project, which is part under the ISA Square program. Interesting to know is that the blueprint consists or can be accessed via a document, but there's also an online version. 
And as I said, the blueprint is regularly being updated. So it's in line with the most recent uh, developments and trends. Now, in terms of contents, we see that it's structured around five main focus areas. It's about policy and strategy alignment. There's an important element of digital government integration. We also have standardization and reuse, return on investment, and finally, governments, partnerships, and capabilities. Now, looking at these five focus areas, we see that they are also coming back throughout this course, uh, which really focused on location element. In such a way, the blueprint can be seen as a guidance framework that is closely related to the content and the key ideas, key concepts we address in this course. Also interesting to see is what it mainly constitutes about our 19 recommendations related to these five focus areas, but also how it's approached. It looks at six different roles and try to provide uh, specific guidance to each of these six roles. So guidance to policy makers, guidance to uh, service owners, managers, implementers, guidance to ICT managers, architects, developers, to man data managers and scientists, to uh, location data uh, providers, and then finally to private sector product and service providers. And a final interesting element of the blueprint is that the many different best practices on location enablement it provides, uh, covering the, its five focus areas and providing examples uh, at different administrative levels and from different uh, thematic fields. Now it's also at the national level, we see more and more that strategies exist, strategic approaches exist on how to deal with the integration of location data, location data infrastructures into digital government. In 2019, a study was taking place within Europe where an investigation was made on how different European member states were dealing with the integration of location data into digital government. Now, this st study was able to, in fact, uh, identify three main approaches. There were countries that were working really on one fully dedicated strategy on how to well integrate location data into digital government. You also had a set of countries that rather looked at how can we integrate elements of location data of SDI into our uh, wider digital government strategies. And finally, we still had a set of countries which did not really have such kind of strategy, but rather were looking at uh, location data SDI more as a technical issue. Now, at the bottom of the slide, we provide four examples of more recently launched uh, strategies from four countries, the Netherlands, Germany, Sweden, and United Kingdom. So four national strategies, all dealing with uh, taking advantage, maximizing the benefits of location data, location technologies, and making sure uh, that we can uh, uh, move towards location-enabled digital government and even a location-enabled uh, digital society. But also at the lowest level of government, we see that strategies exist on how to, how to better integrate location into our digital government and how to really realize the added value, the benefits of location data, location technologies. Now it's important here to highlight or to stress the importance, how should I say, or the specific role of these local governments, these cities, these municipalities, and these regions. They are important on one hand because they really support or they are the level the closest to the citizens and they support these citizens during many uh, key life events. That's already what's make them a very relevant uh, administrative level. On the other hand, we also see that subnational governments are working or are responsible, are collecting and generating a lot of highly valuable location data, which is not only valuable for their own uh, processes, their own services, but which also could be extremely valuable to other uh, governments at other administrative levels and to uh, parties outside public administration. We here show you not an example of a strategy, but rather an example of a service or, an, or a, the intelligent dashboard of the city of Amsterdam, which really well shows how location data can be integrated to, pro, to get and provide a complete overview of, what, uh, of the challenges such a city is dealing with, but also the current status and potential, potential problems, potential solutions in a really integrated manner. Now, this can be seen as an example of an, should I say, an advanced uh, city or an advanced subnational government. Now, when talking about these subnational governments and their strategies, it's important to uh, be aware that there are really uh, important differences and that they're not all uh, at the same level of development. This is shown by a recent study uh, in the context of ESPON that really compared the stage of digital strategies in different cities uh, from different sizes and different parts of Europe. Now, without uh, going through all the details of this figure presented on this slide, 
I think it's really important that we are aware of these differences between uh, cities in different parts of Europe, cities with different size, et cetera. But overall, the key message is that subnational level uh, governments are an important uh, actor. And it's also important that they work in a strategic approach or that they develop a strategic, strategic approach and work in a strategic manner to make sure that all their the all city departments uh, work towards the same direction to make sure that they can optimally take advantage of the added value of location data technologies. Now, throughout the course, throughout the different modules, not only this one, but also the previous modules, we talked a lot about the challenges that need to be addressed. We talked about challenges with regard to location data, challenges with regard to interpolability, et cetera. Important to realize, that's what we would like to highlight with this slide, is that there are many different other challenges that still need to be addressed when we are really want to uh, make sure we are locate, location enabling our government, location enabling uh, society. Just one example are the many ethical issues, or the many ethical, social and cultural applications related to using location data, collecting this data, managing this data, sharing this data. This is about aspects of uh, privacy, security, safety, et cetera. It's about data ownership, transparency and trust. So ethics can be considered as a wider, uh, should I say, a wider series of challenges that really needs to be uh, uh, at least recognized, but also take into consideration when we are talking about location enablement. This also explain, uh, uh, this also uh, is applicable to the concept of uh, fair data. It's about findable, accessible, interoperable, and reusable data. Now, in this course, we already talked a lot about interoperable data, interoperable systems. It's important to also look at how can we really make sure that the, the different data can be found, can be accessed, can, can be uh, integrated, and can be reused by those that could take advantage of these data. So we see still a lot of challenges with regard to realizing these fair data ecosystem, data infrastructure, and the same applies to data quality. Uh, I'm not going to uh, discuss all the issues with regard to data quality that can exist, but there are still some issues that make that, how should I say, that, um, that, that mean or that result in a situation that we cannot fully take advantage of location data. Finally, also uh, related to this course, there's the issue of digital skills, awareness on the many, many different uh, opportunities, the added value of location data. How can we make sure that non-experts users uh, are aware of this added value? How can we make sure that different type of people uh, have the skills and the knowledge to deal with these uh, data, deal with these technologies? So just to set, and again, also, this is just a selection of challenges that needs to be addressed when we really want to realize location-enabled digital government as part of a broader location-enabled uh, digital uh, society. So in this, what we did in this final chapter, we focused on strategies on integrating location uh, into digital government. And we show that these strategies uh, exist at many different levels. Uh, we just provide a set of examples to show you uh, what we mean with these strategies and what are the key elements uh, considered in these strategies. Also in this uh, chapter, we also want to make sure, uh, we also want to show you that, it's, uh, that there are many different challenges that need to be addressed when we really want to make a transformation toward the location-enabled digital government. Some of these challenges have been explained already a bit throughout this course. Others require uh, new courses and new research to uh, better understand to make sure that people are able to deal with these challenges. <laughs>